almost everyone's definition of laziness is someone other than themselves. Now that's not true for everybody, but most people think, ah, as lazy as I am, someone is worse off. Well, first, if we're gonna make that judgment, we need to understand what laziness is. What is sloth exactly? And so in this three-part series, I'm gonna break down for you laziness and the epidemic that it actually is. And we also need to determine if we're the ones that are lazy, and then if we are, how do we cure it? So in this first video, I'm gonna give you an overview in an old sermon that I preached, and it's an overview of what sloth, what laziness actually is. So I'm gonna give you my definition, and then as we go in this series, you're gonna learn how to uncover uh, some of the hidden laziness in our lives, and then if we are lazy or if we are slothful, how do we uh, get out of and escape from it? What is the cure? So this will be a great video for you and any of your friends. You think, man, I think my friends might struggle from this, but here's a quick tip. Don't just send them a video on laziness or slothfulness. That's actually probably the worst thing you could do. This is a great conversation starter. So over some coffee, over a Zoom call or something like that, get together with them and share this with them. But I think this is gonna be really helpful for you. So here's part one. Okay. So let's look at a definition. What is, the, what is sloth? What is sloth or laziness? Okay, what is it? We all have a guess, but let me give you my definition of it. And it comes in four parts. Sloth is excessive laziness that leads to the failure to use one's abilities or fulfill purpose because of the desire for comfort. So I'm gonna read it again. Excessive laziness that leads to the failure, failure to use one's abilities or fulfill purpose because of the desire for comfort. And I'm gonna unpack that in these four parts for you. The first thing we see is that sloth is excessive laziness. Listen, there's no way around it. Like some of us are looking, maybe, maybe there's a deeper definition of sloth. Maybe it goes really deep. Maybe it's just like, like maybe the people that are slothful are just somebody else. There's no way around it. If you're excessively lazy, that is sloth, okay? It just is what it is. We can call you slothful. We can call you a sluggard. And the Bible likes to make it apparently overly obvious to you if this might be you or someone you know. Proverbs 26, verse 14 <clears throat> As the door turns on its hinges, so does a sluggard on his bed. Now, let's just stop there for a second. So you open a door, right? You know, the hinge kind of opens up and finally comes, rolls to the other side of the hinge. And you're just, <sighs> rolling over to the other side of the bed. What time is it? Oh, it's 1130. I mean, geez, it's not even lunchtime. Why would I get up now? And you're just in bed, roll, tossing and turning, the daylight's in your face, and you're unfazed by it. I mean, literally, I get one ounce of daylight, and, like, my cortisol levels are through the roof. I am, like, I'm the freak of nature. It's terrible for me. Trust me. I won't live long. But nonetheless, some of you will live very long because you are well-rested, okay? And you are like this, and as the door opens nice and slowly, you rotate in your bed, find a new position for the next few hours, because getting up is difficult and it's hard. And then when you do get up, or when this lazy person gets up, the Bible makes it even a little bit more apparent. The sluggard buries his hand in the dish and it wears him out to bring it back to his mouth. <laughs> Can we just laugh at that for a second? That's ridiculous. You didn't know that was in the Bible? <laughs> the Bible's making fun of lazy people. It's the Bible's making fun of lazy people. This is what it's doing. No, you can, you can look in the Greek if you are the Hebrew if you want. You can examine this biblically. You can take out your concordances and your, all your different books and, and, and try to understand this in some sort of like overarching, meaningful way about purpose and victory over your life. But really what it's saying is sluggards, it's so hard for them. They're so lazy that it's difficult for them to get the Dorito to their mouth after they've dipped it in the guacamole. It's like that hard. Right? You open the pizza box and you can't get, quite get that third or fourth slice to your mouth because, geez... It's a journey. Um, you get what I'm saying here, right? It's difficult to get up, right? My wife wanted to point out, she'd give me a good analogy of someone who sits on the, you ever sit on the couch and then you, you're really hungry, but you're so tired or lazy that you can't even get up to get food, so you just go hungry? <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. Uh, apparently that's a thing. It's difficult for us if, you, if we are lazy, to do the very basic things in our lives. You see this. So there's no way around it. Sloth, by definition, is excessive laziness. 
We're lazy constantly. We watch too much television, too much Netflix, whatever it is, and we find ourselves in the position of either as a door turning on its hinges or someone who can't quite get the, you know, the pizza to their, their face. You got it? You see that? Excessive laziness. There's more parts of this definition, though. The next part of the definition says excessive laziness that leads to ability to use or it leads to the failure to use one's abilities. Okay? Now, I'm going to shock some of you. Okay, I'm going to shock some of you right now. This is like, this is going to blow your mind. We don't, use, we don't use our abilities, but we forget that work was created before sin. What? Work was created in the garden before sin entered the world. Did you know that? So that means that everything God created, the Bible says, is good. He creates man and woman. It's very good. But he created us to tend and keep the garden. Now, most of us think work is a curse, not work, good. Am I wrong? Am I off? Work, curse, no work, good. It's actually, it's actually the opposite. God created man and woman for work. It's part of it. Work was invented before sin enters the world, which means it's inherently good. Look at the verse, Genesis 2, 15. This is in the midst of God creating everything. He just creates man and woman. He says, the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it, and keep it. Before Adam was ever filled with any sort of sin, before there was any brokenness in the world, before there was destruction, God had Adam work. Sorry. I'm so sorry. That means a desire to not work or never work is actually inherently a ramification of sin, not the other way around. You see, a, a man and woman have the desire to keep their garden. When sin enters the world, the desire to work becomes filled with what the Bible calls thorns and thistles. A desire to not work means that our jobs are going to be hard, and so we don't want to work them, become lazy. Okay? That's what we're talking about. When you battle laziness, you battle a curse from the fall of man and from sin. So it's important to keep that in mind. Now, next part of this definition. It says this. Excessive laziness that leads to the failure to use one's abilities or fulfill purpose, or fulfill purpose. Sloth and laziness does not only cause you to do things, to do something, right? Like watch too much Netflix bin, in binge qualities, sleep all morning, watch too much television, play on your phone too much, whatever. But it also causes you to not do something you should do or even want to do. You even want to do. Let's say, let's say you've been trying to get a job and you've been working on your resume or you've been thinking about working on your resume and you've been thinking about maybe dressing up your LinkedIn profile, but man, geez, that's a lot of work. And then once you, you know that eventually once you get there, like, oh man, the job officer is just going to be rolling in. So like, why not take an extra extended pause and just get ready? Because right, you're going to, you, let's say you want to go into social work. Okay. You want to do something really positive for the world, right? You want to, you want to serve those who are less fortunate. So you got to get this stuff done, but your laziness causes you to not work on your LinkedIn profile, to not get your resume done. So not only did you not or just watch television instead or just not do it, procrastinate instead, you also robbed yourself of fulfilling a purpose that you want for yourself and God might want for you. You see what I'm saying? So that's going to leave you very sad and it's going to leave God sad as well. You are missing out on the purpose for your life. This is something you want to do, but you don't do because the laziness gets in the way. You see, there are consequences to our laziness, not just benefits. I know we think, oh, I'll get to whatever. Whatever needs to happen will eventually happen. There are actually consequences, not just benefits. You see, laziness and purpose are actually inversely proportionate, proportional. So that means as laziness goes up, purpose goes down. Purpose goes up, laziness goes down. You, if you want to fulfill purpose more, if you want to work towards a passion that you have or that God has given you specifically, you are going to have to elevate your, your purpose, which means your laziness needs to come down. Your laziness, which is so ridiculous and silly, could be the thing that's holding you back from becoming who God wants you to become. So simple. It could be your Xbox. It could be your Xbox. It could be too much food on the couch. It could literally be that. It could be getting to, getting to that place where you're just relaxed and comfortable. Now, those who are lazy will make a lot of excuses, okay? And that's part of being lazy. You, there's a, lots of excuses that come. And a lot of the excuses sometimes are rational and sometimes they're very unrational. Like this one here in Proverbs 26. The sluggard says, there is a lion in the road. There is a lion in the streets. What is he saying? 
Is, is, he, is he being serious? Is God being serious? He is making fun of someone who always has the excuse of why they can't get it done. Oh, you don't understand. I mean, it's 62 out and drizzly. I mean, I, this weather in San Francisco has really gotten to me. You know, I, I'm from another place, but now I'm just a baby when it comes to weather. And so the slightest form of drizzle means, I mean, the roads are crazy. There's no way I can go out. Oh, I mean, I heard the BART was running three minutes late. Uh, goodness gracious, it could be more by the time I get there. I don't know if I can get on the BART today, which means oh, I'm not getting on the bus. That means I'd have to walk down the block. And Well, I don't know. Probably not. Could be an earthquake. Not going to do it, right? There's always a reason here. There's always a reason for this person to not do something. So ask yourself, what is the reason you always tell yourself why you don't do the thing you know you need to do? What is the excuse you've given yourself? What is the, the thing you've put in your way that you say, man, there's just no chance I can do it? You oftentimes hear folks who you ask, hey, what do you do for a living? You're like, oh, I used to do X, but I don't anymore. Why not? Well, I had a boss that, you know, I mean, they really stored my growth at the company I was at. And man, if I had a different boss, man, things would have been different. But I never really got promoted to the position I wanted because, you know, this boss had it. So I quit. You hear that? Always constantly looking for somebody else to blame shift towards. Always looking for the person, right? Always looking for somebody else to blame. There's a lion in the streets. Oh, the boss did it to me. Oh, there's no way. I mean, my sister was fighting with me. There's just no way. I just got a lot going on this week, says the 23-year-old single guy with no job. I've got a lot, a lot going. I've got, to, I've got to get a sandwich around 2.30. There's a lot going on in my life. There's a lion in the streets. Could be an earthquake, right? Okay, you see what I'm saying here? Let's go along further in my definition here. So the definition, the slugger, or no, that's not it. The, the definition, excessive laziness that leads to the failure to use one's abilities or fulfill purpose because of the desire for comfort. This means that an extraordinary desire for comfort can cause you to be lazy. Not that hard to figure out. You, you're not lazy, you just like being comfortable. You just like being at homeostasis. I just like not moving. I'm in my equilibrium right now. That would cause to me to, maybe my anxiety to trigger. I better stay put, right? These are the things we tell ourselves when it comes to laziness. But the, the Bible says if you want to learn how to work, it's actually not that difficult. You see, you don't need a counselor or a psychologist or a Pinterest article or blog to tell you what sort of issue you have with your heart. You can actually just look at ants. So verse six, or verse six through eight of Proverbs six, go to the ant, O sluggard. You want to know how to get up out of your bed? Go look at the ants outside your backyard or on your porch. Consider her ways and be wise. What is he saying? Ants are more wise than you. Without having any chief officer or ruler, she prepares her bread in the summer and gathers her food in harvest. What does this mean for you? Some of you say, man, I don't know. I just am the type of person that needs to be told what to do. So I better get married and find a spouse that just kind of tells me what to do. I need to find a job that like where the boss just like, you know, micromanages because I just am not going to get anything done. And, and God would say, well, why don't you take a look at the ants because they don't have a CEO and they still figure out how to do the basic things for their own lives to, be, to find their own inherent purpose. You see, just look at the ants. But there's also other consequences for sloth, and I think we see them in here. If you're lazy, there's a chance you might not have any food. There's a chance you might not have any money. Could it be that your lack of food or money is directly related to your laziness? Look at verse 9. Look at verse 9. Boom, there it is. Magic. How long will you lie there, O oh sluggard? He's talking to lazy people. How are you, how, I told you to get up and look at the ants to tell you, to show you exactly what a lazy person needs to do, needs to learn to become diligent. How long are you going to lie there? When will you arise from your sleep? He's mocking you, right? He's mocking us, us lazy folks. He says, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. He's talking like, think about sleepy from us. Snow White just, oh, always oh, tired. A little nap in the car before work, right? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And what? Poverty will come upon you like a robber. 
Oh, it's all cute that you just are lazy and just need a little rest and you just want to do whatever you want. Just a little, it's cute. Well, stick them up. You got no money. Give it here. Poverty's upon you like a robber. And want like an armed man. That means laziness will lead you to want more. I just have, oh man, it would be, man, those one percenters, I mean, they've got it all. I mean, imagine if some of us had some of that money. I mean, goodness gracious, I mean, I'd have an uh, electric scooter as well. I mean, I'd have those things I need, right? As poverty, want comes upon you like an armed man. Thanks for watching. Hey, get ready for part two coming soon. It's also going to be in the video playlist once the, all the whole series is released and then part three the next day after that. But hey, if you liked this video and you felt like this was helpful, would you subscribe to Ex Nihilo Health channel and just give us a like on the video. Hit the notification bell to hear about more of the latest videos coming up. I hope to see you soon.